Welcome back. They were both from similar tough backgrounds. So when software businessman Andrew Cowles met boys own Stephen Gately, they bonded and became inseparable soulmates. And then last year, of course, as we all know, tragedy struck. On the 10th of October 2009, the world of music was rocked when devastating news reports revealed boys own star Stephen Gately had been found dead in his holiday home in Mallorca. As one-fifth of the most successful boy bands of all time, Stephen and Boyzone sold over 40 million records worldwide and played to crowds of millions. In June 1999, Stephen took the incredibly brave step of announcing to the world that he was gay and three years later he met Andrew Cowles, the man he eventually married in a civil ceremony in 2006. Andrew has now paid tribute to his late husband by finishing his debut novel and hopes to ensure that Stephen's legacy as a singer and a writer lives on. And Andrew joins us now and welcome to you. Hi. Um, we're just sitting here ch chatting about the book. Um, this is the book, The Tree of Seasons. And uh, it's not quite what you'd expect really, is it? It's such a beautiful, magical mystery, fairies and goblins, and this is a side of Stephen that we wouldn't have really known about, but he, this, he loved this sort of yeah, thing, yeah, grew I mean, up with these books. Well, that's, I mean, st st Stephen was uh, incredibly childlike, I mean, he, um, it, he loved Disney, I mean, we, every year we, we would go to Disney in Florida. Um, he spent his days uh, when he wasn't working, because, you know, you get a lot of spare time, you, you, if you're doing a two-hour show in the West End, or mm. you're doing a stage show with Boyzone, um, you've got the day to yourself. So he'd spend his days watching Spongebob and <laughs> you know, cartoons. Uh, he's, he read The Faraway Tree numerous times. He loved um, uh, Tolkien. He'd read all those and seen all the movies and loved watching movies. Harry fantasy Potter's movies. Those as Potter, well. Potter, yeah. huge fan, huge fan, yeah. And so um, that's very much where his head was. And um, I think from the book, you, you, get, you can really feel he had a passion for that, but more so, you can feel that he loved film and the film versions because it's written like he was seeing it in his head. Yeah. Yeah. So he wasn't planning a story, he was, he was writing down what he was seeing. Well, I guess what was so lovely about it also was that there was no pressure of a deadline. I mean, this was a book that he was writing yeah. purely for himself. He was, you encouraged yeah. him to do this. He had this story in his head. It wasn't for anybody. It was just to get those thoughts out. And it was this story that he needed to write down. Absolutely, absolutely. He, I mean, he, it wasn't a publishing deal in place, no. so he didn't have to do it by a certain date. And actually, it took him four years mm -hmm. um, from start to finish. Um, but, and there was an eight-month break at one point, you know, and I, you know, he put his laptop away. I bought him, his favourite colour was red. I bought him a lovely new red laptop to get him started on it when he decided he was actually going to do it. And he tapped away. Some days he'd write nothing, some days he'd write a few pages, um, the, you know, and... There were breaks. Well, it was a stream of consciousness as well, wasn't um, it? So, so he didn't bother about uh, sentences or no. punctuation. Right? It would when it started, <laughs> no. it just was. Yeah, I mean, his, his, away. his education hadn't been that great anyway, and so he he um, he's, he didn't use any grammar, any punctuation, any capitalisation, any indentation. So it would be blocks of text, just really quite tricky to read actually, because there was no speech marks. You couldn't tell what was said and what wasn't, and, yeah. and no commas and things. So every um, few months, I would take chunks of it. Uh, send it to a proofreader and we'd get back a nicely formatted version which I could actually read. Yeah. <laughs> and did he look at that and go, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and he did. And uh, he loved, he had a real passion for it, so he loved telling people about it. Mm. So he'd, but it'd always be out of context, you know, you don't know the whole story, so he, mm. just, he just tells you, oh, um, Gradelda's doing this and um, Bella Tinks is... And people say, oh, that's interesting, <laughs> but it lets you know who the characters are. Yeah. The, uh, that terrible, terrible time um, last year, yeah. and, uh, tenth of the, the 10th of October, um, you say that you, got, you, got, you get comfort, if there's any comfort to be had, you got yeah. comfort out of the fact that you'd, you'd had a great day and he was in a, a yeah. terrific mood and very happy. Had he, had he finished it by then? Yeah, it, 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 it's actually more than just that day that had been great in particular. You know, every relationship, you always have your ups and downs and there's, there's you know, whatever. we'd spent two months, he'd been on tour with Boyzone, which he loved doing. He got it lit him up, you know. And then um, we spent t nearly two months travelling. We'd been uh, to New York twice, Florida for Disney. Um, we only back for a few days. We went to Paris, and then we went to Mallorca, and we went back to London for a few days. But we were being a tour guide, mm -hmm. and then we went back out to Mallorca. And the, the whole idea was he was going to spend a month finishing the book. It was his own deadline, and um, he, I'd been there pro supposed to be programming for work, and. 
there's a computer in our bedroom, big proper computer, and he had his laptop. You know, and I expect him to be on the terrace or one, you know, somewhere else. And instead, he sat on the bed behind me and was tapping away. And I'm trying to concentrate, and he kept saying, "Oh, I know how it's going to end. Uh, what if Good Elder does this bit?" And then, and so. Um, He'd found the ending, and he was telling me about it. And at the time, I was quite, I was like, "Oh, yeah, jolly good, baby." Um, I'm trying to concentrate, but now it's really important that he told me all of that. Yes. Um, mm. And he had written some notes as well on the plane, so because he didn't want to use his laptop on the plane, and um, so actually, we, we knew I, he, he knew what the ending was, and it's it, it, it's almost it's almost fateful. It's peculiar because he'd spent four years writing it. Mm. He'd actually finished the story. Mm. Well, I know that, uh, that Ronan said uh, at, at his funeral there are only a few pages left to do and by hook yeah. or by crook, those who loved him, and there are so many in this room, are going to finish this book. Um, the other thing that also surprised me, uh, knowing, knowing you know, what you said about him, is the fact that he was frightened of the dark. And, and you think that someone who was so captivated by enchanted worlds yeah. and, 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 and that sort of thing, that the dark wouldn't have been frightening at all? Oh, I don't know. Lots of things lurk in the dark, you know. He, um, he, Stephen was quite spiritual, and he used to see things. I mean, since he was a child, a little child, I mean, he had this um, ghost uh, that used to follow him around when he was a little child. And um, so he, he, yeah, I mean, I don't think it's, it's peculiar. That if, you, if you were to open your eyes in the night and see someone staring back, I think you might like to have company in the yes. bed next to you. Mm. If you have really. actually seen something, then I yeah. can completely understand I mean, that. Yeah. In, in, you know, in a, in a purely non-salacious way, he has slept with every member of Boyzone. Uh, over the years on tour, he would call them if, really? he, if, he, he, if he felt something or saw something, own. and they would take, t take turns to, s to share the bed. Yeah. <laughs> so but also, I guess, sort of having it shows that sort of imagination that you have. It's that certain type of person that makes it so brilliant yeah. when you come to write a story you because know, you think your mind thinks in a completely different I, I way. Just, I just think he never really grew up, and he was like a child. And he, I think maybe children can see, maybe see more than the rest of us as well. Mm. They more see the world in a different way, yeah. yeah. And Stephen was like that. Um, he was incredibly shy as well and, and private. Um, but he liked to show off, he liked to be centre of attention, mm. but only in the way like a child does. So um, knowing, that, knowing that that's the sort of person that he was, th th it must have been hurtful when all those things were written afterwards that were yeah. not true and not him. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and and I, I appreciate because I, I, I was, obviously I was in a real daze and I was tucked away in Mallorca, I couldn't even leave the apartment when all that was happening. But I, I did see that you, you'd spoken out and actually how atrocious it was because people, they were looking, you know, somebody, some celebrity like dies young, they look, they look for drugs and things and some, some scandal. And actually people just die young sometimes and it's terrible when it happens. So it really wasn't fair. Stephen had actually never coveted the press. I mean, he'd been on, he'd been on, been on here, you know, when they had an album that was out. Yeah. But that's to inform their fans. He'd never been out, you know, trying to get past or anything. Yeah. And so actually to come after him on, you know, when he died so young and so tragically, um, is is unfair. You know, it, it's it's just yeah. it's actually it's just bad form. I mean. And um, how are you? How are you doing? Um, this is hard work. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm quite private. Stephen always kept me out of the limelight. I, I didn't want to be. I don't want to be a, a celebrity. I don't like cameras very much. Um, and I'm coping day to day, you know. Mm. And it's uh, it's been just over seven months. Um, I miss him terribly. Mm. Uh, the, the picture on the back of the book has been great comfort to me, and I find myself kissing him good night sometimes because mm. it's a good size picture to kiss. Um, I still. I still um, have a ritual where I, I, I uh, bid him good night at bedtime and kiss his pillow because mm. we did that every night. I think, I, I think when you're in a married couple, yes. you know, you get into a pattern and it, it, was, it was always, you know, um, good night baby, I love you, mm. and I give a kiss. Then he said, I love you too, and kissed his back. And I don't get that, of course. Mm. And I miss that. And last night I was asking him for strength for today because I, I was fearful about coming on the telly. Um, but I've got to do it for him because if he was around, he'd be doing it yeah. himself. Yes. And you know, this is his legacy in a way. Well, it's a, I tell you what, it, what, it, what it is, it would be a lovely book if you've never read, read out loud to your children. Yes. It would be a lovely book to read out loud yeah. to them, which would be such a great thing. That's what I've been saying to people: is that actually, if if, if, if you're a twelve-year-old, you can you read it yourself and have a lovely story. But I think it's perfect for a parent to read um, a child of five mm. or up. Because there's some scary Harry bits. Harry will probably grow up with this. <laughs> there are scary bits in there. Yeah. But the reviews have been wonderful. And um, I think it was Star Magazine said uh, an instant classic.
<laughs> and they can't wait for the movie. So and Steve will be very proud and quite happy if, if that happens. So. Well, well done for today thank because as we, kn we know very well that this is not the sort of uh, thing that you feel very comfortable doing. And, and we thank you for coming in. Thank you very and, much. Uh, and good luck, good luck with it. Thank you and both for being uh, so gentle with me. <laughs> <laughs> At all. Nice to see you. Nice to see you both. Thank you. Well, we're back after the break with Mark Addy.